Hey guys, welcome back. This is Cam. Today I want to share a method of how I raise my seedlings and or raise orchids that has no root. This method simply increase the humidity for your rootless orchid and or seedlings so that it had a chance to survive. Since these are seedlings, which means that they need a lot of moistures. They don't need a lot of water, but they need humidity, very high humidities, okay? So it's your, um, you know, rootless orchid or any orchids that are no roots, they need high humidities. And I know there's a lot of method out there, and I think this is the method that I would like to use. I used something similar before, but this is a modified version of my previous method. Uh, you're welcome to use this method or let me know what other method that works for you in a comment below. Now let me bring you a closer look to my seedlings. All right. Hopefully you guys could see what I have here. These are uh, Vanda's uh, seedlings. I don't know the exact name of it. Since uh, I got this out of somebody who is selling it for cheap, so I grabbed them. There's about 10 of them. I don't know what the flower looks like. So don't ask me what the flower looks like. These are seedlings. As you can see, they have few to little or no roots at all. Like this one right here, definitely no roots, okay? And so we're gonna use a method that I modify and hopefully this method would increase my chance of keeping these babies here. And if you have any uh, method that works for you, Please leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Now, what I have here, basically an aluminum tray. You could use any material of your like. Okay. I put a wire mesh that you can get from any of the hardware stores. All right. And this will basically allow my orchid to sit on top of this wire mesh and there's gonna be water that I'm gonna fill it up to about three quarter full. This will in turn provide humidity for this uh, type of babies here. These are seedlings, okay? Do I still need to water them? Yes, I still have to spray them on a daily basis, but the orchids can actually get moistures through its surrounding, through um, water evaporation, which is in the form of humidity in this case. Now I know a lot of you guys probably have other methods where you put it um, on the rock bed or whatnot, you put rocks in there or clay pellet in there. The problem with that method is the cleanup. Once the water starts growing algae, if you have to change our water, it's a lot of work. And I don't like to clean up. And if you have clay pellet in there, if you put waters in there, it's gonna have calcium deposit on those pal uh, clay pellets. And so it's gonna be a pain in the butt to clean those clay pellets in the future when, want, when you wanna reuse them. This is a very simple and I think very effective method to raise this baby and raise the humidity for your sick orchid. Now I put some uh, wires here these copper wires, I put it in there to actually eliminate any possible chance of mosquito larvae going in there to hatch, okay? And a uh, study shows that uh, coppers can actually kill those larvae. And so I don't have to worry about mosquito. And it is summertime right now in Southern California. The weather is gonna be warming up. Warm plus moisture means there's a lot of uh, mosquitoes. So I put some wires in there and I make it in a circular loop because lately there's been a lot of talks about electrocultures and I, I want to look more into it, but I don't, I don't see any uh, of that for orchids, but for gardening, there seems to be a lot of uh, people are doing it, electroculture. And I just thought, why not? I have some copper wires around and I do use it on my garden. I don't know the result of it yet because I just started for, um, this method for my gardening, but I'm gonna try to test it for this uh, method uh, to raise the humidity for my orchids. At the same time, maybe provide a, a little bit of electrical feel. 
so that my orchids can actually absorb those uh, electrical charges and hopefully speed up the recovery process, okay? Now, don't ask me much about electrocultures because I don't, I'm new to this and um, I don't see anybody doing it for orchids, so I don't know if it's gonna work on orchids. Don't call me on this, I'm testing this out. So if you are doing it the first time, you are welcome to comment below what you thought about electroculture for orchids, okay? And um, you, I have these orchids, they, they come, I took some net pod with me, I got some one inch net pod. You could use net pod or you could use any of these pods. I have a two inch pod that you could use, or you could simply just put your um, orchids on top, laying right there, that's fine. I got a little bug in my tray now, I don't know how this got into my uh, pot. I guess when I leave it in a greenhouse, a little bugger get into my tray. I'll get it out later. So this is what I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna place the orchid on top. I'll place some on top and some in the net pot to see how they're performing and some maybe on top on, in the two inch pot here. Now I see some of the rootless one like this. I wanna put it on top. So if there is any electro, electrical charges, this galvanized mash here can actually transfer those charges to the plant and hopefully it helps the plants to absorb those um, negative charges, those ions, you, you so call it, okay? The one that have roots, most likely I'm just gonna place in a pot and just leave it as it. Like this one has two roots. Root tips are growing well. This about two, three years from blooming size. So I don't hope to see any uh, bloom soon, but it's okay, it's a learning curve. For me to raise any babies like this and if this works out i might want to do some uh flash i might want to buy some uh you know flash that uh, is ready to, to deflash and then grow them that way it's a cheaper method of growing orchid and also when you buy uh, orchids that are still in flash you know for sure your orchid does not have any diseases or uh, bacteria so this way you know your orchids comes out clean you don't have to worry about viruses all right, so let me go ahead and fill the water. I think the little bugger there ran out of the tray, which is good. I was hoping that it does on its own so I don't have to drag it out because removing this mesh can be a little challenging because I kind of like bend it so that it tied to this tray. So that if I, wanna, if I need to move it, I can move it. And this mesh is not gonna go around anywhere. And I encourage you guys try this method. If you have some kind of wire mesh like I do here, you could try it. And I think this is a easy, simple method. Instead of buying a whole bunch of rocks or using clay pellet, this is a very simple method that you could use. I have this mesh laying around anyway because I use this to put on top of my uh, greenhouse tray, um, the uh, rack there because the rack that I have a little too big for these two inch pot to sit in. So I use this masher to um, allow my pot to sit in and uh, sit on top of it and it doesn't uh, you know, wobble or move around too much. This will actually stabilize it. So let me go ahead and fill the water and load this in the greenhouse, you'll see what I mean. All right, so I hope you guys could see it. Water levels about half fill, a little over half. And I think that should be enough. So these orchids gonna sit like that and hopefully it will have a chance to recover pretty soon. I'm hoping the root will grow about three, four inches before I transplant these into a uh, bigger net pot on its own. And you do know that Vanda doesn't really grow well potted. It's need to be uh, exposed to air. The root needs to be exposed to air. But since these roots about less than half an inch long, so I'm gonna just gonna keep it in this uh, particular tray here and wait until the root grows about three, four inches long. I know you guys gonna question later on when the root grows longer, wouldn't it goes down through the, the hole on the net there? Eventually it will, but I will mitigate that problem once uh, I have that problem, okay? I'll, I'll find a different method of raise, maybe raising it up a little bit and maybe hang it up a little bit. We'll see. but. This is what I'm gonna be using to raise this baby, and I'm sure you could use this uh, for any of your sick orchid or orchid doesn't have roots. 
Or maybe you want to propagate some dendrobiums, uh, nobly or any kind of dendrobiums that you want to propagate that doesn't have roots. Uh, you can use this method. It provides very high humidity for it as the water evaporates. All that surrounding moistures can be absorbed by the orchids. Okay. This is if you're gonna, you can do this indoor or outdoor. If you're gonna do it outdoor, I recommend you put some coppers into your water to avoid breeding mosquitoes. Okay. And you can also throw in a penny if you have pennies, but most penny nowadays don't, are not pure coppers. They actually copper and some other materials. So you want 100% copper, you have to buy some, uh, copper wires or some coppers, uh, you know, pipes. Then you just put a little bit in there. Then that, that concentrate should be enough to uh, kill any of the mosquito larvae, okay? So if you guys like this video, please give a thumbs up. We'll see you next video, okay, guys? Thank you. See you next time.